I have been collecting bottles for quite a while now preparing for this project. You're gonna see I have so many different shapes and sizes. So what I'm gonna be making is some potion bottles for Halloween. Yes, they are a lot of whiskey bottles, but I need to decide which ones I wanna use. I knew I wanted to use this one because of that dripping wax on it. This is gonna look so cool. All different shapes, sizes, so that we have a nice little height variety. If anyone is curious, this is one of my favorite whiskeys, Bullet. Same with Tin Cup, that's a really good one too. And the big guy, okay. I think that's a nice little collection. I might add one more non-whiskey bottle that's a glass that's smaller, maybe a little bit smaller than this one. I think it could use maybe one more. I have one, two, three, four, five. Usually I like odd numbers for things like this, so I don't know, we'll see. I decided to add one more small bottle to the mix, so let's start with that one. I found this at a thrift store years ago for just $1, but I wanna make this one look aged like a bronze patina. So I'm using my bronze patina paints by Dixie Belle, and I have a love-hate relationship with these paints because I am just too particular about wanting it to look a certain way. But the way these paints work is you wanna add a coat of paint, let it dry fully, and then add a second coat. And while that second coat is still wet, you add the patina spray, which creates that aged effect. Here's how the bottle is looking after the patina spray did its thing, and personally, I don't love that drippy look. It doesn't quite feel authentically aged to me. So I decided to add another layer of the bronze paint, but this time I dabbed it on with a sponge so I don't cover all of that current tarnish. I just want it to have a more sporadic look. Then I used another sponge to add the patina spray by hand so it would be a little bit more controlled this time, and I love how it turned out. Now for the whiskey bottles, I still needed to clean them out and make sure that there was no alcohol left inside, but I also need to remove the labels. And I typically like to use my heat gun to remove labels, but these ones were on there so good, so instead I took them over to the sink and I used hot water and a scraper. But the hot water doesn't remove all of that sticky residue, so then I used my Goo Gone to remove the rest. I don't typically use a lot of color in my projects, but for today's video, I wanted each bottle to be a different deep jewel tone color, except for those patina ones. And I wanna use different materials and effects on each bottle to give it its own theme and to give you plenty of ideas on how you could make different potion bottles for Halloween. So the large Knob Creek bottle, I painted in a navy blue. Each bottle got at least two coats of paint, and when painting on glass, just make sure that the first layer is fully dry before painting on that second. Otherwise, you'll risk lifting all of the paint right off the glass. I'm gonna be decoupaging this bottle using one of my DIY Struggle decoupage papers. If you don't know my friend Brandy over at the DIY Struggle YouTube channel, you have to go check her out. She has, she has her own craft brand with tons of awesome decoupage papers, rub-on transfers, and so much more. It's called the DIYstruggle.com and I will leave it in my description box. But I picked this skull and floral design because it ties all of the colors that I wanna use for the bottles together. I used my Dollar Tree decoupage glue and a fan brush to apply it to the bottom section of the bottle. I like to add a layer of the glue on top of the paper as well to ensure that everything is adhered well, but you can see where that glue is on the paint. It had made the paint a little bit darker and more shiny in this section. So once the glue was dry, I went back over the whole thing with the navy paint to blend it all in seamlessly. And like I said, each bottle is gonna have a theme, and if you couldn't tell, this is a skull bottle. 
So I grabbed one of my little Dollar Tree skeletons out of my stash and I cut him in half right at the spine. I want him to be popping out of the top of this bottle. I also decided to cut his arms where the elbows are to make sure that I can make him a little bit more flexible and position his hands where I wanted them. And then I used my super glue to stick him onto the bottle and add those arms back in place. I think there could have been more added to this bottle, but I really love how it looks. this next bottle, I'm going to use air dry clay with some silicone molds. This is the lock and key mold from IOD or Iron Orchid Designs. I really enjoy their molds, but they can be pricey. So any mold will work though. You can find tons of options at both Timu or Amazon, but you want to make sure that you dust your molds with cornstarch before adding in the clay so that the clay doesn't stick. For the air dry clay, I'm using Sculpey. This is one of my favorite clay brands. And I alternated two designs around the whole bottle. The clay helped to cover up all of those raised words around this bottle, and I used my tight bond glue to add the clay pieces while they were still wet. This helps the clay to form to the shape as it dries. Once the clay was dry, I painted it with that same green color that I used on the rest of the bottle. This one I probably could have added the clay before painting it, but I wasn't really sure what direction each bottle was going to be going in at first. I kind of just went with what I was feeling in the moment. This bottle is going to be pretty simple and a little bit more elegant than some of the others. I'm going to add some gold rub and buff and kind of graze it over those raised edges of the clay. I don't want the clay to be a solid gold, but have more of an aged rubbed off look. And I'm using a small makeup brush here because it is super soft and dense compared to a paintbrush. It also helps give that shine of the rub and buff, but it also keeps that only in the spots that I want it. And this is definitely my favorite bottle. I'm going to use a second one of my patina paints for this next bottle, the iron paint, which is supposed to give a rust like patina. And with this one, you first want to apply a coat of the patina primer. I don't think this is actually necessary on glass, but on metal, it stops the patina spray from continuing to eat through that metal object. However, the iron paint is incredibly thin and sheer, so I like to add that primer on anyways. And for the iron paint, I dabbed it with a sponge to get more of a texture from it. I thought that this would also help give more coverage to the paint. On the second coat with this bottle, I did the patina spray in sections so that the iron paint didn't start to dry out on me. I also used a sponge with the spray so that it wouldn't leave those drip marks. Here's 
here's what the bottle and iron patina look like at this stage. The iron and rust patina never seem to work out super well for me for some reason, but I do keep giving it a shot. You can see that it is starting to change colors already. When it was dry, I thought it was just a little bit too subtle, so I went over it again in some areas where I wanted more patina, and I like how it turned out much better with that second layer. At Michael's, I found these fun paper and sticker pads with various potion bottle labels on them. There are tons of options to choose from, and they give you two of each, which is awesome. I knew I wanted this bottle to have a snake theme, so I grabbed the serpent label. But I don't like for my paper to have straight edges when decoupaging, and especially when I'm going for an aged look. So I wet the edges with some water and a paintbrush, and I tore them off. Then I used liquid patina as the decoupage glue for this one. Now this paper is super thick, so it did take a minute for that glue to seep into it and for it to start to mold to the shape of the bottle, but I just kept going over it with the glue and the paintbrush until it was holding its shape and sticking down. I was a little bit nervous that the moisture from the glue was gonna alter that patina paint, so I dabbed any excess off with a paper towel, but I am gonna go back over the edges to blend it all in. And then I added some rubber bands around the bottle and the paper to make sure that it stays adhered while drying. Next, like I said, I'm going over the edges with, an iron, with the iron paint and patina spray to blend it all in. Now I just need to add that final touch to this guy. I got a rubber snake and I painted it black. I actually didn't really mind the original color of it, but I had wanted it to be more solid. Then to attach the snake to the bottle, I'm using my super glue. This was so much more difficult than I had thought it would be. The glue did not want to stick easily to the rubber. I don't know if it was all those layers of paints and patina or what, but I had to hold it in place for several minutes. Then finally on that middle section, I had to get some rubber bands to help me hold it in place while the glue dried. But that's it for this guy. For this bottle, I love the red wax drips and I didn't want to touch that part, so I carefully painted around it with my black chalk paint. And this paint is actually getting old and thickening up, which I actually felt worked in my favor because it had added so much texture to the bottle. And I stippled the paint on instead of brushing it for even more texture. This one is going to have a spider theme, so I picked out the Widow's Web sticker as my label. And with that spider theme, I wanted to add even more texture to this bottle, and I saw someone on Pinterest use tissues to get this look, so I separated the layers and I started gluing it down in kind of a wave motion, just bunching up that tissue layer and adding glue as I went to hold it in place.
Once I had all of the tissue on, I took a glob of glue on my paintbrush and then I wiped it onto the bottle to create drips. This is just adding another layer of texture and dimension to the bottle. Like I said earlier, I didn't really have a plan for how these were going to turn out. I just let my imagination take over and I played around with different mediums to get a variety of looks. Then once the glue dried, I had to go back over everything with the black paint. But to make the tissue look more like a web, I added some white wax over top. And I used a heavy coat, but I didn't rub it in. That way it stayed looking vibrant and white and not like a white wash. For the final touch here, I grabbed a Dollar Tree spider from my stash, but I painted over it black to hide that purple glitter and also to help the rest of the glitter from falling off and getting everywhere. This bottle is super simple, but I had to mix up my paint color. I really didn't have any purple paints, so I mixed red and blue and then added black to make it a deep jewel tone like the others. And I added two coats. I'm gonna use my clay molds again for this bottle, and this time I'm using the one that actually looks like a label. This felt like the best option and it covered up most of the raised words. It didn't cover up all of the words though, so I did also add two little filigree pieces at the top. I do wonder if I should have added two more to the bottom though so that it was a little bit more evened out. But once the clay dried, I painted over it to match the rest of my bottle, the clay took several coats of paint before it was solid. I found these half eyeballs at Michael's as well, and I thought they would look really cool on the front of this bottle. They were like stickers, so I just peeled the backs off and stuck them into place. 